The model you see on the screen just now is a very quick photogrammetry capture I did at a weekend. I used a relatively cheap digital camera. Um, I took around 900 images, which I then did some basic color correction and shadow removal on, and then imported the images into reality capture. And after about two or three hours of processing time, this is the result I got. Covering how to capture and process photogrammetry data is a large topic and is out with the scope of this video, but it's something I'd like to cover at a later date. This video is going to focus on how to use Unreal 5 to create modular assets from this raw photogrammetry data. But before we move into Unreal, I just wanted to show a couple of things that you can do in Reality Capture that can really speed up the process inside Unreal. So the first thing that I'd do before taking the model into Unreal is I would try to set the scale. This can save a lot of time. Now. To do this, go to the Alignment tab, Define Distance, then find an area of the model you know the scale or size. In my case, it's the door. So I know this door is two meters high. So all I need to do is click a point at the base of the door and a point at the top of the door. And as you can see, currently it's saying it's 14 meters, which is definitely too high. Once you've defined your measurement point, you just need to click these plus icons. Three or four is more than enough. Uh, like this. And then once you've defined that, you can click off Define Distance and click this distance. What you'll notice is that you can see the calculated distance and then you can see a value above that's a defined distance. So currently it's set to zero, but if we set that to two, which is two meters, once you're happy with your defined distance, uh, you need to click Update up here. That will take a very short time to scale the model. As you can see, that's it now done. After setting the scale, the next thing I would do is remove any parts of the model that I don't want to take into Unreal. The main reason for doing this is it saves UV space uh, and texture space, but also obviously it means that when we simplify the mesh, uh, all of our polygons will be going into things that we might want to keep. So to do this, you go into the Reconstruction tab. The first thing I'd do is click Advanced and then go down and select the largest component. So it'll take a little bit of time to process, so I'm going to pause. So it took about 20 or 30 seconds to figure out what was a large part and select it. Then what I'd do is invert my selection. Now this basically just means that it selects any bits of the mesh which are not attached to the main mesh. Once I have done that, then I'll change my selection mode from advanced to lasso, and I'll select any parts of the mesh which I don't want to take into Unreal. So for example, this area is quite low quality, so I'm going to remove that. You hold control while using lasso to add to your selection. So as you can see now, I've got these parts selected and this part selected. I'm just going to check over the mesh and make sure there's nothing else which really stands out that I want to remove. So once I'm happy with my selection for removal, so everything that's in orange will be removed, I click Filter Selection. And that's a result of the filter. Now all the parts in orange are removed. Every time you do an operation like filter or simplify, um, Reality Capture creates a new mesh. So you'll notice here that Reality Capture has added a new mesh to the bottom of my mesh list. So any process you do is relatively non-destructive unless you start deleting your meshes. So the next process is trying to reduce the number of polys that are in the mesh. I have loaded meshes into Unreal at 15 or 20 million polys and used the modeling tools. But the more polygons you have, the longer it takes for the processing of the tools to happen. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to simplify this mesh down to around 6 million polys. This will make it reasonably fast and set on rail, and I think that will give us enough detail for the pieces that we need. To simplify or reduce the polygon kind of a model inside Reality Capture, all you need to do is click the Simplify tool up here, and then the bottom left you'll see a little dialog box that pops up. You can set the triangle count here, which allows you to enter any value that we want that's currently at 6 million, which is what I want. And then all the other options I'm going to leave as they're set just now. You can project the textures at the same time, but I would recommend leaving this until you've re-unwrapped the model. Otherwise, you're going to lose some UV space from the parts you've deleted. So once you're happy with this, all you need to do is click the Simplify button and then wait. So that simplification process took around three to four minutes to simplify it from 150 million to uh, 6 million. The next process is I would uh, re-unwrap this model and retexture it. Uh, to unwrap a model inside Reality Capture is really easy. Um, I would say this is probably the weakest part of this process. 
The UVs that Reality Capture creates are very, very fast, but they're very inefficient. So I wouldn't recommend using this process for a final in-game mesh, but I think it's perfectly fine for a prototype or a concept model. So to do this, uh, you just need to go to the Reconstruction tab, click Unwrap. Now I'd recommend using the sentence that I have here. You can obviously change the texture size if your model's smaller or if you don't want this much texture resolution. But I would definitely consider using a maximal texture count and setting your texture count to one. Uh, this just means that the model will be unwrapped onto one single texture rather than multiple textures. Of course, you can use multiple textures if you want, but I prefer in cases like these to just work on one texture. So once I'm happy with the settings, I'll click unwrap. As you can see, the unwrap is incredibly fast. Um, it's unwrapped six million polys in just over 20 seconds or so. So the next process after having unwrapped the model is to texture it. Now there's two ways you can texture meshes. Um, the first is to click this texture button here, which will use the camera positions, which I will show you now. So it'll use all these cameras that you can see here to project um, different parts of these uh, images onto the model. The other process is using uh, the texture reprojection feature. Now, in order to uh, bake a normal map um, or even a displacement map, um, you'll need to use the texture reprojection. Now, what this does is a lot more like a traditional modeling package. It will take one mesh and then reproject that mesh onto another mesh. So for example, uh, I have my full source mesh here, which is 152 million polygons with a texture. And um, I have this reduced version here, which is uh, 6 million polygons. So inside the reprojection settings, if I open that up again, I can set my source mesh, which would be the full source. And then I can set my destination mesh or my result mesh, which would be model three you can see here. You can rename your models, so if I wanted to call this um, low poly UE5, then I can do that, and then when I'm looking at the reprojection settings, it's more easy to see which mesh I should be selecting. Uh, you can see in here the options allow for super sampling. I'd like to point out that increasing the super sampling massively increases uh, the time that it'll take to reproject your texture. For example, I did some tests and when super sampling is off, it took around 2 minutes 30 seconds. When I did 4 samples, it took around 8 minutes. When I did 16 samples, it was about 26 minutes. And when I did 64 samples, it was near an hour and 40, an hour and 30 minutes. So the amount of time that it will take to reproject will be significantly larger the higher sample count you took. So, you know, keeping this to the lowest amount necessary is a good idea. During my quick test, I found that the quality between uh, the texture rejection and the, using the texture button was very similar. Um, I personally thought that the texture button actually gives ever so slightly higher quality results, um, but that does depend on what sampling rate that you use. So since I'm not actually gonna do a normal map for this particular mesh, um, I will just use this texture feature here. So when I click this, it will start to retexture the model using the images that I took. So now the texturing process has been completed. It took around 15 to 20 minutes or so to process the texture. So similar in time to a 4 to 16 sample uh, texture reprojection. So we now have done everything inside Reality Capture that we need to do. We've set the scale, we've removed any parts that we don't need, we've optimized the mesh, we've unwrapped it, and we've textured it. So the only thing left to do is to export the model. To export the model, you go up to the Export tab inside Reconstruction and select Model. When the, the dialog box goes up, you give it a name. In this case, I'm going to call it wall, uh, Castle Grounds underscore Wall. Um, you can choose the different formats that you might want to export to in here, but personally, I usually use FBX. And then click Save. Then the main export dialog box will pop up. This is where you choose the settings for your export. All of this is pretty self explanatory. You will want to make sure you have this set to Yes, uh, otherwise, you won't export any textures. Uh, the naming convention is usually quite good. It means if you have multiple textures, it will name them based on uh, the U and V, very similar to like a UDIM workflow. Uh, your texture type, 
And then one of the important settings to consider setting if it's not set already is to which transformation preset. This just basically means that when you export the model, it will be orientated correctly in these software. So for example, Blender Maya or 3DCO Max and Unreal. So for our case, we're using Unreal, so we'll make sure we set it to Unreal. Uh, you can add transforms into the various presets here. One thing to bear in mind is that um, Reality Capture, although it says it's in meters, when you export this to Unreal, it comes in as centimeters. So we set this to two meters, but that might end up coming in as two centimeters. Um, but it's very easy in Unreal to fix that. So for now, I'm just going to leave it set to a scale of one. And um, this is really only applicable if you're exporting a normal map. Um, you can choose whether you want to flip the normal here. If you change this transform preset setting, it automatically decides whether to flip the, the normal map or not. So in Unreal, um, it wants a normal map flipped, so it automatically does that. So when you're ready, you just click OK, and then it will start to export the textures and the mesh. It will take a little while for this to, to happen, um, because obviously exporting a reasonably large mesh at 6 million polys and also a 16K texture. I think that's a good point to stop this video and in the next video we will look at how to get this model into Unreal and create modular meshes from it using Unreal's modeling tools.